So you're a wonderful senior personality. So I can say a few words, okay? Also, please pray so that we can discuss few things, okay? Uh, so at least I read through these uh, slokas yesterday a couple of times, okay? So overall, looks like we have three characters. One is uh, Dhritarashtra and Vidura, and also there is a set of uh, uh, kingsmen sitting along with uh, Vidura, which includes uh, primarily Maharaj Yudhishthira. So, we know that Vidura was a Mahajan from his past life. He was uh, Yamadar Maharaja. So, and the whole scenario here, situation was, Dhritarashtra was, I should not say that way, there is a problem basically and Vidura wants uh, Dhritarashtra to come out of that problem and then he gives some solution as well. And Prabhupada comments continuously over the period of time and he also gives various points and a solution for that one as well. Okay? So, in the first one, which is 18, uh, Mahara, Maha, uh, basically the translation is Mahatma Vidra knew all this and therefore he addressed Dhritarashtra saying, my dear king, please get out of here immediately, do not delay. Just see how fear has overtaken you. So, the problem here is, I think it was stated the verse before that he was stuck in a materialistic way of life. The verse before says, insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too much attached to family affairs and are always engrossed in their thought. So, Dhritarashtra was put into the situation where he is trying to uh, enjoy his last few days in a very comfortable way and Vidra didn't like that one. So he wants him to get out of the situation so that he can get benefited out of that and move forward to a uh, higher destination actually rather than uh, being there. I think I think. Oh, I do that all the time with my bad jet work. <laughs> okay, thank you, Brahuji. And uh, in this entire uh, problem, Vidra is playing, basically he, he is a very saintly person, Sadhu. And uh, Srimad Bhagavatam describes that even to get a human life is very rare. We heard over a period of time during our courses that we hear in our lectures in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, to get a human life is very rare. And on top of it, to see a sadhu, a Vaishnava, a darshan is even very rare. We have seen many people roaming around, but I mean, not all of them see saintly persons every day and get their darshan. So one has to feel very fortunate even if they get a movement of association with a pure devotee or a sadhu. And Vidura represents one of the such a very wonderful sadhu actually, very saintly person, pure devotee. And the, ro the role he is playing here is that of a uh, spiritual master which we all kind of familiar with. So the, the purpose of a spiritual master is just to make sure a devotee get out of this material situation and goes back to Godhead. That is the only purpose of a spiritual master. And all our spiritual masters here are playing the same role actually within our community and society. And Vidra is one of the best here. And he says Durya, uh, Dhritarashtra in a very uncomfortable situation where he is trying to enjoy his last few days comfortably taking advantage of the situation. So he, he is saying like, please get out of this situation and 
try to become add, add value so that you can go back to Godhead. Um, I think in the purport, Srila Prabhupada basically explained uh, the entire situation how Dhritarashtra was situated in. I think the whole thing is that one, yeah. And then at the end, uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada comments that Yudhishthira is not in the situation. There is another character we talked about. Whereas Dhritarashtra is in that situation, but uh, Yudhishthira, Prabhupada is saying, uh, he did not ask Maharaj Yudhishthira in that way because he knew that a king like Maharaj Yudhishthira is aware of all fearful situations of this flimsy world and would take care of himself in due course, even though Vidra might not be present at that time. So, even if Vidra is not present later time, Yudhishthira is well positioned in such a way that he can take care of himself and get out of this material entanglement. So, he is not addressing there. So, he is specifically addressing only Dhritarashtra on this one. Uh, so, the, pro the problem here is uh, basically uh, it is called uh, Bhavaroga. Srimad Bhagavatam explains that one like being here in this material world we are all deceased basically and it is a huge problem even ordinary people even highly educated people even certain saintly groups they cannot see this problem actually and this roga is so in the kind of ingested into our dna it's impossible to get out basically and this bhava roga uh, they explain this bhava as three types one with the body, we are sitting in this body, this body demands heavily and you cannot control sometimes basically, you are stuck within it and it demands and somehow you need to manage that one. And the second Bhavaroga is with our family, relatives or close friends, that is another one. And the third one is our society, our environment and everything. So as a living being once we was born, we are faced with these three diseases basically literally at every second 24 by 7. And the only solution that was proposed uh, or the solution that was proposed was basically to uh, take shelter of um, Krishna by taking up our regular practices which we our spiritual masters require one is chanting our holy names reading Srimad Bhagavatam associating with devotees going to holy places and also at the same time always hearing about Krishna's Nama, Rupa, Guna and Leela last times all these four continuously 24 that is the only solution. This entire problem one sense cannot be remediated it is only mercy of Krishna to get us out of this one. The only thing we can come out of or we can understand from the whole situation is that I have this disease. Once we recognize this one, we are almost like 99 percent closer to our destination actually. Because these problems are so intricate and intertwined into our uh, daily activities as well as into our nature because of our previous past conditionings, probably we have lived life, so many lives before, where we have tasted all these things, we have lived these lives again and again and again and again millions of times and it got injected into our DNA basically totally fully. So we do not even recognize that we have a problem, that we are being put into this situation where we need to get out. So once people recognize that I have a disease, I have been injected into this material world and I have been suffering and then my only solution is to take shelter of Krishna and to engage his devotional service to engage. Once we recognize basically 90 percent, 99 percent we have achieved and later it is just our continuous practice and sadhana which makes us to get closer to Krishna. But that may, may not guarantee us to get out of these tribulations again. Because one has to go 
as once they take birth, they have a body, it has to go through its natural cycle and there will be pains and pleasures which we may we may not avoid. But all we can do is wait for Krishna's mercy to pull us out of that string actually. So, there is a sequence of verses beautifully described in Srimad Bhagavatam, I think first canto only. Starts with uh, Susrusho Sraddha Dhanasya Vasudeva Kadaruchi and the next one is Nashta Praya Shabhadresho. This whole sequence was designed very nicely. So, the first solution is primarily to see whenever we get an opportunity to serve a saintly person because it brings tremendous amount of uh, piety and sukriti into our lives. At the same time, it also establishes Krishna in our heart. So, any opportunity we get, we need to take that opportunity to render a serve them in a big way. We, but if there is a way, will, you can find a even doing a minute ones, giving a pair, you know, cup of water maybe even to that extent. That creates tremendous amount of uh, sukrit and piety in our lives actually. So, serving sadhus is very good. And the next one is reading Srimad Bhagavatam. So, this Srimad Bhagavatam is, uh, as we already know, is uh, Krishna himself and associating with Srimad Bhagavatam tremendously purifies one's consciousness and it raises your consciousness from being in this world all the way up to Golagurindavan actually. So, your consciousness tremendously expands and we can also and this itself is a medicine. And Sukadeva Goswami in one of these verses somewhere, he talks about that the medicine is also Srimad Bhagavatam and continuously injects that uh, medicine into our body where we can recognize that we are diseased basically. So, and also the other one is like doing DT worship and all this. So, these are all solutions actually doing our sadhana everything. Okay. So, we as I said like uh, Vidura is a saintly personality, Yudhishthira is a well advanced devotee who knows his situation, who will not get into that one and is continuously engaged, whereas Dhritarashtra is comfortably positioned, trying to engage in materialistic enjoyment during the last stages of life. And Vidura as a spiritual master, being kind as a sadhu, he wants him to get out of the situation. Okay? I think that is the essence, I think as we go through probably we will share some more points. So, you want, you want to read 19 then probably then we can one. one. No, we can go to, you can go to time. This frightful situation cannot be remedied by any person in the material world. My Lord, it is the Supreme Personality of God that the eternal time that is opposed to us all. Therefore, there is no superior power which can check the cruel hands of death. No one wants to die, however, as to the source of bodily energy. Even in the days of so called scientific advancement of knowledge, there is no remedial measure either for old age or for death. Old age is the notice of arrival of death served by cruel time, and no one can refuse to accept either summon the call or seeking judgment of eternal time. This is explained before Zero Zero on you might ask the director to find out some remedial measure for the infinite spiritual situation, as he has ordered many times before. Before ordering, however, Vidura informed the that there is no remedial measure by anyone or, or from any source in this material world. And because there is no such thing in the material world, death is identical with the Supreme Personality of God. As it is said by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita 10.34. Death cannot be checked by anyone from or from any source in this material world. Here in the country one is to be a mortal and one is to be a type of penance, of which the whole universe trembles. And Brahma himself opposed him to dissuade Hiranya Kashtu from such a severe type of penance. Hiranya Kashtu asked Brahma to avoid the blessings of immortality. But Brahma said that he himself was subject to death, even at the top of a plane. So how could he award him the benediction of, of, of immortality? So there is death even in the topmost planet of this universe. And what to speak of other planets that are far, far inferior in quality to Brahma Loka, the residing planet of Brahma. Wherever there is the influence of eternal time, 
their sin tribulation. Then they birth, they use old age of us. All of them are innocent. And then during the course of Srimad Bhagavatam and the reading, we hear that these are all the Srimad Prabhupada's explicit systems. So when he's writing, he's deeply meditating on his worldly problems, and sometimes he even cried actually. He explains in, in his purpose somewhere. He's so much into uh, spiritual ecstasy, and he realizes this, this, all these purpose are given by the Lord Himself. He is just a mediator. So these purposes are very powerful and uh, helps us to kind of advance, uh, you know, spiritual life action. So as you can see, so the uh, here in this one, the second one, uh, Dhritra, uh, sorry, Dhritra is immediately saying uh, the situation which Dhritarashtra uh, is faced, put it though, you cannot do anything about it, you cannot remediate that. And somehow, this is nothing but the eternal time of uh, Supreme God, which is Kala, and you have no solution or remediation for that one at all. No solution at all. So here uh, he calls out. So this is explained before Dhritarashtra because he might ask Vidra to find out some remedial measure for the imminent fearful situation, as he has ordered many times before. And this tendency is. Not only in Dhritarashtra, this tendency is there in our entire uh, world population, actually, mm -hmm. including even our devotees also. Sometimes we get into this uh, fearful situation and we want a solution for that one. Sometimes if there may be, sometimes there may not be, depending on the situation. But the higher situation here is basically death itself, and for death, there is no solution. Everyone has to accept or bow down before death. So this problem cannot be solved or cannot be remediated. That's what the father is mentioning. And he gave very nice examples here. Because previously in the past, several of these people, they tried to overcome this death and then to create some remedial situation. But there's no solution for that. So Nene Peshko was given as an example where he went to Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma basically said there is no solution. Everyone has to go down before death, one has to die. So there is no solution. So the problem here uh, Prabhupada is trying to solve it also. Like try to solve the problem of death, old age, disease and birth. The higher problem. The lower problems they may, you may try to solve the solve, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because you need to bow down before them. So what happened? Any other organizations that you want to share? Any other points? Yeah, I was thinking of this point as well. Manan Judishti was asked by um, Yaksha that what is the most surprising ah. thing? And he says that everyone thinks, everyone thinks that uh, People around them are dying right. left and right, but they, they themselves think that I will never die. So then here this reminds me that uh, it's approaching the time and when the time comes, everyone has to leave. Doesn't matter which planet, highly pla uh, heavenly planets or hellish planets or earthly planets, they all have to die. And uh, we were also hearing this from uh, Bhagavad Ashur, one of the Prabhupada disciples who came to Kavandos uh -huh. recently. He was talking about this point also that lot of uh, you know a lot of devotees especially are also affected like you know we are supposed to be like you know uh, remembering this point also at all the time and why because we have the answer to it those who don't have the answer for them it's okay, okay. like for them you know they, they it's like it, it doesn't matter you know if I fall sick or, but if I have the like for example this vaccine Mm. Then at least I know the struggle and I know how to how to get out of it. The solution is in our hands. So those who have the solution still don't do anything. They are more foolish than those who <laughs> have uh, who don't have the solution and they don't try. So it's like for devotees, it's such a high responsibility uh, that they they are aware of it. So they apply the solution to their life and also they share with others. 
But then the, those, those who don't have these two points that he was bringing up. Um, I don't know. That's the point I was thinking, Prabhu, is uh, Vidra was actually insisting that Krishna should be Dhritarashtra, so he knows in and outs how Dhritarashtra is living his life actually. And from this purport or previous one of these two, Srila Prabhupada is saying that uh, Dhritarashtra always wants a remedial solution and he wants to live happily. Even though Vidra advised him several times, looks like, but still he is continuing, continuing, continuing one after another. And even when it, before death is approaching, still he wants to be a remedial, remedial solution, he wants to live comfortably. And this time looks like he wants to cut it off permanently. Yeah. The whole section in the Mahabharat called the Vidura Nidhi. Ah, okay. Before they come up with that uh, Kurukshetra battle, Dhritarashtra can't sleep at night. He's worried about what the post going to happen. Happened the outcome. And he summoned Vidura in the middle of the night to give him some advice. And uh, so many verses. So that's why Prabhupada says, as he has done before. Yes, yeah. Anytime he's in trouble, he'll call upon Vidura. Oh, okay. Vidura would advise him. Okay, so he seeks input, but he still seeks input, but doesn't kind apply of it. yeah. So what you were saying about applying it, yeah. That's a very tough one, right? Yeah, as you're saying, probably we hear so many lectures as well in our daily lives, but try to apply those ones and get out of that situation is a very tough thing. It's very hard, actually. Yeah. Very nice, yeah, verse. It's also like the one the verses that you brought up from Bhagavatam first time of the four. Yes. Yes. chanting and it's actually doing the right thing for you or like you are actually doing chanting the right way so he was saying that if you want to know if you are chanting Shuddhanam your name of holy name uh, uh, then you Shiksha Shakam says that you know Nayanam uh, uh, yeah. so it's like you know you have to cry when you cry that means you have reached that state of Prema mm -hmm. and how do you how can you cry by Associating with those who are also crying. Crying. Right. So, yeah, association is ultimately yeah, association is and very everything. Because of you, I can do it. So, the rest of the way, the way is <laughs> Association is very important. Yeah. And this process, in one sense, it's easy and <laughs> sometimes it becomes complicated. Well, I don't know how. Do we? It happens naturally, right? It becomes complicated. And we tend to do so many remedial measures instead of coming back to the base point. Okay, so many things are happening. Okay, let me come back and do more rounds, more reading, associate more this one, rather than trying to encounter, do so many remedial measures actually. Yeah, very nice points for you. Any other points or realizations? I've heard from like Amrita Prabhu that like Guru Govinda Maharaj says that like the whole like process of Krishna consciousness is just crying only because <laughs> initially we'll cry for like because this material world is like suffering like the Prabhupada is the purport but then after we develop we like start crying for like like to get service of Krishna and out of love for Krishna so we're always supposed to be crying and initially we'll cry because of how like how much suffering this world is but that cry. 
But diversity, like it should be like it's an impetus to like to get out and like and serve Krishna. So like just be, be like, oh well, like, material what is suffering. Let's not, not do anything about it. Like we know, we know that this is not our place. So like we should do something about it. And that's like what Vidura is trying to tell the other Ashtra to do. So that's yeah. just that's just my thoughts. Yeah, very nice, very nice point. Yeah. Yeah, 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 taking out of context, it happens a lot actually in our movement actually. We just take one passage, one statement from somewhere and we tend to apply it as if it's the whole solution actually. Yeah, then looking at the bigger context, yes, yeah. Very nice point, yeah. Any other points, anyone? So, I, I just uh, going back to that verse that uh, Alek Prabhu Going back to the verse that Alek Prabhu was saying that Shridhyanti uh, Granti uh, uh, re- reading the Bhagavatam uh, takes out the knots in the oh, heart. Oh, knots, the last one. Yeah. yeah. Vidyate Hridhyanti. Granti, yeah. And um, because we can, li- if we think about, we are listening to so many lectures, but we, why are we not able to apply? It's because maybe it's not sinking in, but if we read the Bhagavatam every day, um, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Um, we are, every book we read, we read through the prism of our own life experience. Mm-hmm. And we will get some realization when we read. Mm. And that is, in my humble opinion, perhaps more uh, impactful, more lasting yes. than um, just passively listening. Yes, yeah. If we read and write, that forces us to churn that message in our head. Mm. What exactly did we get from this one purport? Even yes. one line in one purport mm. sometimes can be life-changing for us. We've all had that experience, one line. Um, but to get to that place, it uh, just like Japa and, San- and uh, Kirtan, Kirtan you do together, but Japa you do alone. For yourself, yes. So yeah. Bhagavatam also has to be done in both ways. You should listen to lectures in the association of people, but also there has to be that private time that you alone are engaging with the Bhagavatam. Yeah, that's a very nice point. Yeah, one should read that one. Yeah. Um, I think so much emphasis, so much emphasis laid on association, so much emphasis laid on association mm-hmm. with devotees. <clears throat> most, most most cases don't really understand what the association is about. Mm. You know, sometimes or most cases we think the association is just physical presence. You know? <laughs> In the, the physical presence of a person, mm. and that is where we miss the point. Mm. There are so many instances in the scriptures, especially in Chaitanya Charitamrita, these things are explained. In the case of Chota Haridas, with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm. this is God Himself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is God Himself. And then He was <clears throat> in His association, He took Him actually on pilgrimage. Mm. He went to so many places of pilgrimage. But he couldn't be delivered. Mm. He was not able to be delivered. And he fell into the hands of the Badataris. Mm. And Lord Namarapu had to forcibly drag him out and, and took him back mm. and dropped him at, at home uh, mm. in the temple. So, association has more to do with our mental constitution. Mm. And not just a physical you know, presence or proximity. And um, we can associate the Bhagavatam, yes. Same with Bhagavatam, trying to read the Bhagavatam. But proper association means attentively hearing or yes. in the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam also explains that one cannot really hear attentively unless the mind is purified. Mm. And the mind cannot be purified unless one's actions are purified. Mm. And one's actions cannot be purified unless one's eating, sleeping, mating, and defending is purified. So uh, everything is really incorporated in devotional service. Mm. What to do, what to think about, and then that helps in the purification of the heart. Because we hear according to a state of consciousness. Mm. 
Mm. We may hear the same, may somebody speak the same thing, but we we'll hear differently and we we'll understand differently. The mm. same stop, the subject matter, the same, same thing. Subject. So we we'll continue the process of devotional service. In due course of time, it become clearer and clearer. We begin to understand more. We begin yes, to sir. understand more. Just how to practice conscientiously the process of devotional service attentively. Because most cases we become too familiar with the process of devotional service that you know we don't take it this very serious. We very don't serious. take it very, very important. Mm. Because we become used to it. Mm. You know, the same thing we're doing every day, seeing the same people, the same process, the same books, the same thing. So we become complacent. We really think that it's it's not anything. Mm. So if some other that we can have a mindset of seeing ourselves as new in the process, mm. that will help us to keep some attentiveness in the part yeah. of devotion and service. Mm. So association, we should really pay more attention in terms of association, mm. associating with the temple, associating with the devotees, associating with prasadam, associating with everything. Mm. So that is why so much emphasis is also laid in attentiveness in the matter of chanting the holy name. Mm. You know, attentiveness is a root cause of all other offenses. Mm. If we're inattentive, we we'll create all kinds of offenses. Offenses, yeah. And as long as we commit no offenses, there's no question of love of God. There's no question of making advancement. Mm. In that sense. So, anyway, the the, mo the the much we are continuing, my only advice is that we should not give up the process of devotional service. Yeah. No matter what circumstances, we should just keep on. Keep on. Yeah. Whether we are good or bad, whether whatever the situation mm -hmm. of finance is, you just keep on. In the course of time, uh, it will come to a point where yeah. we can understand. Beautiful, bro. Yeah. Very nice points. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice, yeah. yeah. So we'll read uh, 1920 then, one of you. We'll read 2100. Yeah. Yena Chaiva bi panno yam pranai priya priya atamair api janahasadyo vyujeta kim utan ye dana dibihi. Whoever is under the influence of Supreme Kala, eternal time, must surrender his most dear life and what to speak of other things such as wealth, honor, children, land, and home. Purport. A great Indian scientist busy in the plan making business was suddenly called by invincible eternal time while going to attend a very important meeting of the planning commission and he had to surrender his life, wife, children, house, land, wealth, etc. During the political upsurge in India and its division into Pakistan and Hindustan, so many rich and influential Indians had to surrender life, property and honor due to the influence of time. And there are hundreds and thousands of examples like that all over the world all over the universe, which are all effects of the influence of time. Therefore, the conclusion is that there is no powerful living being within the universe who can overcome the influence of time. Many poets have written verses lamenting the influence of time. Many devastations have taken place over the universes due to the influence of time, and no one could check them by any means. Even in our daily life, so many things come and go in which we have no hand. But we have to suffer or tolerate them without remedial measure. That is the result of time. Mm. Very nice, huh? So, Pra Prabhupada is uh, very, you know, uh, very smart. He brings the modern problems also into this one. So, I mean, modern context because this Srimad Bhagavatam was uh, very ancient, but still he brings relevance to the modern world too. So he gave several examples here. One of the, one is an Indian scientist who has to force himself. And also example is uh, India and uh, Pakistan division. So a lot of people. So one has to surrender to death. And the, the translation says, so you yourself are dying basically, you have to meet. So why you, you, you have to worry about the other things that attach to you like and then here he, certainly people agree to wealth and honor, 
but he even propada is even saying that children land and home everything is left behind once you leave the body basically there's no point so in one sense he is stressing that okay you need to take care of yourself so even if you worry about your other belongings they don't come with you they don't stay all of a sudden they'll disappear just like that so there's no guarantee for you or for anything other and the last bullet is very powerful here too so even in our daily life so many things come and go in which we have no hand but we have to suffer or tolerate them without remedial measure this is the result of time this remedial measure is very important because for each and everything we tend to make it big expand it try to solve it in a bigger way with our human intelligence and analysis sometimes we end up you know going dragging into the situation totally you cannot even come out it takes a lot of time actually so instead of that one prabhupada is saying most of the situations in normal time are forced by daiva and destiny we don't know why and how because we lived so many past lives what we did we never know so they come so if we just accept it just bow down and surrender and just be there take shelter of the lord it should go away over a period of time because things won't stick for a long time time continuously changes it goes from different phases so one you may be in down phase with certain things but it won't last too long as well so immediately you will get out of that one but our situation mental situation we tend to we grow here in this environments in childhood the way the environment teaches us is that any problem comes you can remediate that one so that inbuilt tendency mechanism built in mechanism since we are grown up in a different environment rather than a spiritual environment because in old and days people never remediated these ones our poor fathers poor fathers if you see they accept and move on things but with the modern society we how our children are being abroad in this environment they want to remediate everything there should be a solution agreed there are certain things which you need to be solved to physically help other people to do all those things are agreed but most 99% of the time there is no solution to that basically you just need to surrender bow down and just move on to time actually so and once we learn this art actually not to remediate measures it gives so much mental peace so much mental peace otherwise you tend to waste your resources just unnecessarily basically this bow down and move on and uh, uh, to this extent i think in avanti brahmins prayers he got one of his realizations too he says like when a problem occurs in your life try to minimize your energy spending on it as much as possible don't aggravate the situation minimize it and use as much as in the service of the lord basically that's how he kind of realizes that whole situation because sometimes we may put into a situation where somebody all of a sudden comes and offends us we feel bad our ego rises we want to take revenge war i mean you can go to any extent we have seen people actually you are unnecessarily wasting all your useful resources on a situation which you don't have any control over too just if you just bowed and it was arranged by the lord just me accept and move on you are saving yourself from so many dangers at the same time lever- using the bringing value by surrendering to krishna and then engaging the service actually sir as my one thoughts so. are any other points in your devotees one point i wanted to make uh, following uh, what chanakya prabhu said about attention hmm. so when we are consumed by problems we can choose where our attention goes hmm. of course we can make some solutions but even whether that solution works may not be under our control hmm. so i think getting our attention back to the process of devotional service i think hmm. is the most important like in our time nobody wanted covid it's coming anyway okay. despite vaccine booster everything still happens so it's it's it happens and you have to suffer at that time you did your best you got vaccinated booster but despite that it happens it happens and also the ukraine war how much uh, displacement from that we were in gainesville on gaur purnima mm. and there were initiations happening mm. and one prabhu was getting brahmin initiation from ukraine mm. that from, situation from mahatma <laughs> prabhu yes and he had sent his whole family to poland to safety okay but he refused to leave the temple okay. going back to prabhu's point about stick with the process in that situation 
he's he's in the room he's getting his initiation and all the walls are padded mm. to protect against like a bomb mm. uh, thing can you imagine being in that situation knowing whether the next day will come mm. and here he is taking brahman initiation mm. and when we asked him to speak he was not complaining he was not uh, lamenting his situation mm. he was just grateful that he was there to serve the devotees who were coming in to the temple for shelter mm. and that even that he could take that initiation wonderful so that goes back to the attention that prabhu said mm. and then while this was happening everybody is running out of ukraine one group in uh, uk is going to poland to set up food and they went to that uh, railway station and distributed prasadam to 1000 people it was mm. winter then going back to what prabhu said about associating with prashadam is also association, association yeah. so the, um, and we can think of solutions in that way mm. you can also go f- give food but that group chose to give prasadam mm. so even in that uh, very despondent situation there are still some souls willing to put themselves on the line and give them association mm. yeah. very, nice, very nice yeah Yeah, sometimes we, we always have some something to complain about in life. Why we could not really do much, why we cannot serve Krishna and all that. But Krishna is so merciful that um, he has given us examples of his devotees, pure devotees, in different conditions of life, who have served him perfectly, nicely. Mm. So, one does not really have any excuse in not making progress in devotional service because whatever situation one finds himself there have been a devotee in the past who have been in that situation even worse than that situation mm. who are served krishna mm. so practically speaking there's no excuse for not serving krishna not being in the position to serve krishna no, there's no excuse mm. because my true circumstances you know cannot really stop one from executing devotional service beautiful you know, yeah. so if a devotee is in the mood of gratitude in whatever situation mm. not just you know complaining about so many things there's always going to be so many things in the material world it's always going to be there but if we learn to be grateful to krishna we will see opportunities in, in every situation and we will see happiness also in every situation mm. and be able to you know remain afloat from all the troubles and all the problems you know, yeah. confronting the matter world so a very nice experience in the ukrainian devotees and you know some of them doing so much seva mm. despite you know the disturbing situations you know. mm. so when you think of it then you say what about those who have no wars nothing yeah that's what <laughs> no, i was thinking like disturbing you got a comfortable position not disturbing us <laughs> just a comfortable <laughs> Com- situation you know so how much more you know so we should be grateful and thankful to the process uh, beautiful beautiful i think the seminar which dwarka ji prabhu also <laughs> gave us you know, complaining it has become an inbuilt mechanism now <laughs> for us you know. yeah. good yeah but yeah on the point of like serving krishna in every circumstance like we see in chaitanya charitamrita like we have like haridas thakur he was like in a cave chanting the whole like chanting the holy name and then we have advaita acharya who is like having a big home like very aristocratic and still serving krishna and then there's galadhar pandit who is very like very austere very like, re- like very renounced and he took initiation from pundarika vidyanidhi who mm. was like a, like he was very aristocratic he was like materially very like externally he looked to be materially attached but inside he was fully in the spirit of serving krishna so mm. it's clear that like like we may be in different situations but we can like achieve like the process of like we can achieve like like we can achieve service of krishna at all times yes um regardless of our material position like prabhu says like you don't need to change anything drastically just add krishna it's possible like we see that like whatever situation we're in there's been a devo- like there's been a devotee that like has done that before so like we should we should really try to serve krishna i was also listening to a lecture recently i forget who said this but they said like we have a lot of technical technological advancement in our society but that's not a sign that's not evidence against the fact that the material world is full of like danger it's actually compensation for those dangers like like now we're seeing like huge advancements in like electric cars and renewable energy and you could say that's like a solution 
but the only reason we have that solution is because of the problem that we created with like the, cro- the climate crisis. So like our solutions are barely catching up to our problems. Mm. And because our problems are far outpacing the solutions, the material world, regardless of like, even in like 2000 years when everything is like, ro- like automated or whatever, there's still gonna be problems. So there's like no actual like peace in this world. And that's like where we have to go to Krishna and, and fully serve Krishna for any sort of permanent benediction. So. Mm. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I remember you talking in one of your lectures. Just change the subject matter, no matter what. <laughs> to Krishna, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Any other points you want to share? So, where are we now? Uh, yeah, so the next one is 21, right? 20, 21, yeah. So, you want to read anyone? Prabhu, you want to read? Yes. Pitra Bratr Shrita Putra Hataste Vigatam Vayam Atmacha Jaraya Grastha Paragaham Upas Upasase Your father, brother, well wishers and son are all dead and passed away. You yourself have expa- ex- expanded the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken by invalidity and you are living in the home of another. Purport. The king is reminded of his precarious condition influenced by cruel time and by his past experience he should have been more intelligent to see what was going to happen to his own life. His father, Vichitravirya, died long ago, when he and his young brothers were all little children, and it was due to the care and kindness of Bhishma Dev that they were properly brought up. Then again, his brother Pandu died also. Then, in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, his one hundred sons and his grandsons all died, along with all other well-wishers like Bhishma Dev, Dronacharya, Karna and many other kings and friends. So he had lost all men and money. And now he was living at the mercy of his nephew, whom he had put into troubles of various types. And despite of all these reverses, he thought that he would prolong his life more and more. Vidura wanted to put out to Duryodhana Dhritarashtra that everyone has to protect himself by his action and the grace of the Lord. One has to execute his duty faithfully, depending for, for the result on the supreme authority. No friend, no children, no father, no brother, no state and no one else can protect a person who is not protected by the supreme Lord. One should therefore seek the protection of the Supreme Lord, for the human form of life is meant for seeking that protection. Dhritarashtra was warned of his precarious conditions more and more by the following words. (laughs) Powerful, right? (laughs) It's like escalating worse by worse. And Prabhupada is, I mean, explaining all the proofs basically, right? And Vidura is also giving proof, you know, you might have given so many reasons, but watch your past, you know. It happened to your father, forefather, everybody is gone, still you want to be in a comfortable situation. Mm. Yeah. And most of the t- times tend to, what happens is like I was realizing, when we read these purports of Sri Prabhupada and then uh, even the translations, we tend to focus on the characters and then try to analyze them and try to see how come they ended up in that situation everything. But the situation actually is to go inside and see what situation we are facing and where, what is going through. We need to apply it to ourselves actually. The same condition uh, which uh, Dhritarashtra is going through, it will for sure happen to us at certain points. It may not happen right now in our life because we are not, we are not there yet probably, but it will come to us actually. As a smart guy, what we should do, what we should at least understand this essence and try to apply now so that when we are there in that situation, we can at least, be, it becomes easy and overcome that situation actually. Mm-hmm. We need to see how we can bring that relevance to us rather than 
um, focusing on the characters actually. Of course, even Dhritarashtra himself is a great character actually. It's not a, he's not an ordinary person. He has performed certain Australia's performances. He is way better than us, millions and millions of times. The way we are living our life, the way he lived his life is way better at that time, right? In Dwapar Yuga. And he is spiritual, everything is there. But still, you see what I mean, how that energy drags that situation. So our situation is even more precarious with all these advancements in life, the comforts we have, so many. So when we are approaching that <coughs> phase of life, we should be ready to at least to minimize and then come out very nicely without planning and everything. Basically. So, any other points? Yeah, I, I was thinking a couple of points also on this. So here, um, there are two very um, important um, like things that that is applicable to literally everyone. One is to, so there is all these attachments, right? Our relatives, our mm. like all these bodily relationships. So not being too attached you know, on those relationships. But at the same time, we cannot be like completely detached. We have to attach to Krishna, right? Mm -hmm. It's That is a known fact that you cannot just detach, detach, detach without attaching your consciousness to something higher. Mm -hmm. So in the in the middle of the purport, Prabhupada is saying that everyone has to protect himself by his action, point number one, by his action, and point number two, and the grace of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So without the grace of the Lord, all these uh, actions have no value. Correct. And all this detachment has nothing to, like, you know, it will not save us from all this uh, cycle of birth and death. Mm -hmm. So also at the same time, depending on the on Krishna, being uh, convinced that he is the ultimate protector and his grace, his grace is always there upon us. Regardless of, you know, if we have perfected our life or we are in the process of perfecting our, our mm. lives. So on that, um, just uh, this morning, Kalakanda Prabhu had shared one thing. Someone asked that our chanting is so offensive. Mm. You know, how can we improve? Because without that, it's impossible to purify our consciousness. So he said, what can we possibly do to free ourselves from offenses? It requires Krishna's involvement. As mentioned in first canto, second chapter, 17th verse, Krishna sitting in the heart cleanses material desires from the heart of his devotees who have developed the urge to hear his message. Yes. Krishna sees our efforts to chant and to serve. We can rest assured in the knowledge that he will help us. So, first part, our actions, again in Damodar Lila also, your endeavor and Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy. It always goes together. Um, mm. So, yeah, those were the two, two points. Yes, very nice, very nice, yeah. Just to add to that one, so it's a very challenging situation where we tend to hear these uh, powerful statements that we need to detach from our family life and then attach to Krishna. Mm -hmm. But the overall message when we read through Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures was, we need to, because once we say we need to detach from our family, that brings so much other attention actually. Oh, I need to get rid of. And, yeah. and the easy solution mind always puts in, whenever there is a problem in our family, I want to get rid of these people. Mm -hmm. It puts that one. And because we hear these statements a lot saying that we want to get rid of this one. So, oh, okay, let me bear for five more years, 10 more years, 15 more years, and then I'm, gonna, I'm out of this situation. You see what I mean? That mind always plays that game. But Lord Chaitanya and our Acharyas are, are teaching in a, in a different subtle way, saying that we can have our relationships, but we need to tend to see how we see them as properties of Krishna, as servants of Krishna. And when we develop that consciousness, even if you live after 50 years together or 60 years together, there is no need to take one brush or anything like that. You can live together, at the same time you can serve together too with our kids, with our family too. There is no need for that detachment. Other philosophers, if you see like if you go to India, there are so many millions of people going in Varanas. You know, I mean, the tendency, once you reach Srimad Bhagavan, I want to give up my family life, I want to go out. And people go to forest, they live there, they tend to spend more time. That is the tendency. But the solution our Acharyas, our Parampara has given is very powerful. It says, Guhe Thako wherever you are, just try to see your attachments and everything as part of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes very easy. 
otherwise i have went through this one so many times in our personal family right? if there is any problem conflict within families and so okay bye i need to wait few more years they'll be out of <laughs> so right it's a natural tendency i want to kind of go that route rather than trying to change my consciousness which is very difficult to change seeing them as belonging to krishna it is a very tough thing and doing our things as a service to krishna but if you if you tend to see them as sub, separate people as well it's a problem yeah. then it, you want to detach and get out so you need to rather see them as attachments to krishna and then serve them and that change is very hard it takes tremendous amount of consciousness change then you just serve and then just move on there is no conflicts or anything like that. even if a conflict arrows there is so much to share there i think dwarka jish prabhu and vishak prem mother shared so much actually over a period of 4 5 years actually or even since they are coming so much nectar there how to handle those situations actually instead of just a detachment that's easy detachment is easy i can just cut it out and move on but to be there and then to change your consciousness continuously is a very very big thing it's a lifetime i mean krishna's mercy if you are sincere and serious we will get that one so yeah also detachment is not like exactly as disconnect detachment no understand yeah yes is like okay you you are you are supposed to do your service uh, duty your responsibility Correct. is that like son parents husband wife spouses whatever so you are performing your duties Correct. as best as your ability but at the same time not like what i served so much and now i don't get anything in return yes. or uh, like oh i am serving it or like for my gratification right, right. i am doing this for my gratification so i think that's where the detachment aspects can can also be understood right that i am supposed to do my duty but it, not it, being attached to the result of the duty you mean the result or yeah the like the intention is it, different right yeah it, it, it's intricate a little bit but the, at the end of the day uh, at least my realization was service is the thread so you need to approach everything as a service mm -hmm. so somehow krishna has given me uh, this particular person this particular service for me to support so you tend to take it as a service and just do those ones and then just move on as a service and uh, i mean duty bound is a first level where you say okay i want to do as my duty but at the same time when you do duty bound there could not be any loving relationships is what i mean it's just like a cut and plain so what i mean I, i did my duty okay i'm good i i'm not expecting anything out of it there won't be any loving reciprocations there within the family so it, it, it's a little integrated at the same time so what i found a service is the thread where i need to tend to see so in that service even humorous relationships even having some sense of gratification is also fine is what i mean sometimes we have to ask ourselves honestly when we say detachment are we trying to escape yeah that's better yeah that, that is otherwise we all have parents at home we still have a very big responsibility to them okay. now they are in okay health but as they age okay. we can't say i want to be detached they brought you up like you still have to do all that so oh, yeah, yeah. and that's a very uh, that's why i think propath called this the international society of krishna consciousness because yes. no one knows what our consciousness is sometimes we ourselves don't know correct yeah so we have to ask ourselves and say am i doing this to escape from the situation correct yeah or not and also every service we do um even with duty sometimes it can be very um bland if we just we are not at that level yet to do it only for duty so we need some rasa in that too but if the center of the house is krishna i think um no matter how many conflicts we can always come to that come to maybe that. before coming into krishna consciousness it took two days to resolve a conflict now it takes 20 minutes 20 minutes yes yeah um but it's still trying to put krishna at the center Sometimes. and apologizing when things happen yeah it should yeah. be a natural yeah. relationship yeah i wanted to make one point about when we read all this we get into the characters without looking at the message mm. like when i first started reading gita i thought i am like arjuna mm. now i think i am like dhritarashtra because <laughs> dhritarashtra heard the whole 700 verses sanjaya heard 700 arjuna heard 700 but what was arjuna's reaction what was dhritarashtra's reaction right so mm. 
so sometimes it's uh, it's also uh, sometimes i think at least i'm speaking for myself i have like a higher understanding of where i am than i really am because mm-hmm. i don't think i'm uh, we i'm in like arjuna's position i'm more in dhritarashtra's position still very attached listening to everything still not changing so i think we can use that character comparison towards inward it should be always inward yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that is a yeah. yeah we mind tends to play games you know when it sees like a movie and then we attach to the characters we try to get their essence and all that. but at the end of the day what does it to what does it mean to me how can i use this one so yeah to like discuss the point of attachments like like in chaitanya charitamrita it's like if if you're giving it up like falsely it's like like or chaitanya i think he says to raghunath das ko swami it's markata vairag it's like a like markata vairag yeah monkey like pronunciation and like rupa goswami says If you renounce something that can be used in the service of Krishna it is mm. it is artificial renunciation. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah like the bottom line has to be pleasing Krishna and also like the attachments can't leave without like something superior it's like param drishvani vartante like like I think that like I was listening to some like a lecture by um his holiness Haldar Maharaj he's like a very like energetic speaker and he was like our minds are like monkeys they're going to keep jumping from place to place to place so like even if we give up this like one attachment like oh like my mind is like going to this like movie i'm like not going to stop watching this show or whatever even if i like give up watching this like show or something like that my mind will find something else to attach to so i can't like it will just keep replacing the material attachment like yes i'm not attached to this thing but i'm attached to something else so, like i've not really made any progress by just detaching only if you attach to radha and krishna then your mind cuz then you're like it's the highest attachment like you're not going to find anything better than that like the mind is going to accept that cuz it's not like, it's no bliss and then you can fully serve krishna but you can't do it artificially by just jumping from attachment to attachment to attachment you have to go to krishna and attach mm, there so nice points yeah i think is holiness radha swami in his book of second book he talks about that on little bit he says it's like a monkey and you need to always give it a banana if you don't give it a banana it's very dangerous to mind and that banana you are talking about is always something related to krishna and other things otherwise it keeps on going from one tree to one tree to one one branch to another branch actually yeah, yeah it's very powerful actually it's ongoing struggle with the mind actually yeah all of a sudden you don't even realize that you got, you are attached actually <laughs> you start with small subtle things it's okay just a minute a day 30 seconds a day and you are attached to that fully and then you we have to really work hard to go and get out of that so, yeah good mata ji yeah now thank you all for sharing i was just thinking in my head like reflecting on everything i'm listening and so many takeaways i have from today's class um but also a question <laughs> so um maybe i can share out aloud the takeaways first like first was to um like both of you stressed on <laughs> crying or feeling it deeply is something that tells us that we are doing it purely like you're practicing devotion purely and i am sort of feeling that overwhelm right now i don't always feel that way um secondly was try not to spend too much time in material resolutions just accept and move on third was to reflect so like mataji was saying read and write that way you can find something that applies to yourself internally and that will make a deeper impact and then um having rapt attention as prabhupad has said in his purports so um I read a book a few months ago that was all about how you can train your attention. Mm. So I was just thinking like and even Krishna says that our mind can be our best friend if we train it that way. So when take away was to always train the mind to focus on devotional life or spiritual life than anything else that's going on. And then when it comes to um family attachment i always struggle because um i understand the point that everyone is krishna's uh representative and we need to serve them but 
I just want clarification. So does that mean I'm still serving Krishna if I'm serving them? If they are not following Krishna's orders or they are not surrendered to Krishna, is that still something I should pursue or then focus on detachment more than doing my because Vedic teachings often say that wife's duty is serve, to serve the husband and support the husband but is that assuming that the husband is also serving Krishna or is that regardless of how the husband is it's regardless actually it's regardless because the the way things work here is we tend to hear different lectures and everything and particularly we hear a lot of lectures from brahmacharis and they tend to be very high because their consciousness is totally different in their background and everything they don't have family kids and children so their austerities the way they propose is very high very severe and when we hear we tend to try to understand things differently so we need to hear more from grasthas like dwarka dishprabhisha and prabhamaj then we understand it different way because you see a lot of examples in chaupati where people are, their mother and father are not devotees. There are a lot of people came into the movement, but still they maintain their relations with their family. We should never neglect those family relationships. Whether they are devotees or non-devotees, it doesn't matter. Because Krishna is sitting in their heart too, right? He is Paramatma sitting in their heart too, trying to give what they desire. So it is up to them and Krishna how they want to deal with that. Our job with them, our relationship should not uh, be interrupted at all. See, we tend to love them, we tend to take care of them, we tend to serve them as they need. And that has nothing to do with this at all. Just be na as natural as possible and tend to focus inward on your stuff between you and Krishna, how you want to change your inward rather than trying to see how they want to be changed. Any relationship, it's like that. A particular wife and a husband is very tough. We tend to, most of the time, once we start, we tend to want to change the other person. Lifetime, spending, wasting energy. But it's the other way around. Uh, all these situations are being brought into our life to change ourselves, even though other person hasn't changed anything at all. So your mother and father may not change for a lifetime. They may change any second. We never know. That's between them and Krishna. Our job is how can I change, tune myself, very nicely so that I can be very nice daughter, very nice mother, very nice you know, sister, whatever our relationships could be. But we need to make sure our principles are maintained at least minimally, as much as possible. Sometimes it's very tough. So I, we also have some family relationships. When we go there, we have some sense of gratification, which we cannot avoid. Just accept and just move on instead of defending and then going into further fights and clarification just for one hour thing which we want to enjoy, just so leave it there and then come back rather than going into fights and everything like that. So you should continue, you should never ne neglect any relationship with anyone. Because how, if you neglect our relationship with, because my Guru Maharaj once told me that, if you cannot listen to your mother and father take their shelter, how can you take shelter of a, another person, Guru or husband, that's what I mean. You tend to neglect that relationship too. She can help it, yeah. So, he is also saying that in the last prayer in Bhishma Stuti, he, in the last prayer in Bhishma Stuti, um, Bhishma says, I have overcome the misconceptions of duality. Krishna is present in everyone's Every heart. heart. Yep. He says that. And the minute we start conditioning a relationship on whether that person is Krishna conscious or not, that becomes a problem. Because now, because there is free will, right? There is free will. Um, I don't know if you want to turn off the live stream, but um, uh, 